Watching the world burn, watching the world burn, May 20th, 2023. Bakhmut has fallen. Of course, it fell a month ago, as I told you, once the inner uh, city had been taken, but uh, there were people saying, no, no, the fight still goes on. Well, it did, and it went on a lot longer than I gave uh, credit for. The Ukrainians put up a hell of a fight uh, all the way down to the last few blocks. I think a lot of them died needlessly in, in my mind, uh, but uh, from what I understand, they're in full retreat. But uh, don't listen to me. Let's listen to Prigozhin and, uh, you know, like him or hate him, uh, he's, he, he's been there the whole time. He's, he puts his life on the line. Uh, he, he says a lot of crazy stuff. In fact, we get more information out of him <laughs> than anybody else. I actually kind of like the guy. I mean, you know, he's a... He's a, he's a crazy dude, man. I I just uh, I just like listening to Bergosian. Let's let's cut to him right now. Май 23 -го года 20:05:20:23. Сегодня по полудню в 12 часов полностью был взят Бахмут. Последний участок, так называемый многоэтажки самолета. 224 дня длилась операция по взятию Бахмута, Бахмутская мясорубка. Началась 8 октября 22 года. Для того, чтобы дать возможность потрепанной российской армии прийти в себя. Спасибо генералу Суровихину и генералу Мезенцеву, которые дали нам возможность провести эту тяжелую операцию. И спасибо Владимиру Владимировичу Путину, что дал нам эту возможность и высокую честь защищать свою Родину. Мы боролись не только с ВСУ в Бахмуте. Мы боролись с российской бюрократией, которая вставляла нам в палки в колеса. До 25 мая мы полностью его осмотрим Создадим необходимые рубежи обороны и передадим военным, для того, чтобы дальше они занимались. А сами выйдем в полевые лагеря. И тогда, когда мы вновь потребуемся нашей стране, нашему народу, нашим семьям, мы вернемся и защитим свой народ, если это потребуется. Владимир Александрович, без сарказма. Ваши парни сражались отважно, сражались хорошо. Если вы будете на этом пути, то вы можете стать второй армией в мире, безусловно, после самой сильной армии мира, это ЧВК Вагнер. All right, so that was Prigozhin. And uh, I was going to talk about, you know, everything that this means, but uh, Steve Turley beat me to the punch. Uh, I tell you, he is a smart dude, and he can, he can explain things a lot better than I can. Let's, let's cut to Steve Turley. Uh, and let him talk about uh, the fall of Bakhmut and what it means and, uh, and what the future is going to hold. Speak, Dr. Steve. I hope you're having a wonderful weekend. We have some huge breaking news coming out of Ukraine. The strategic city of Bakhmut has officially fallen. It's been captured completely by the Wagner paramilitary group. That's part of the Russian forces, the overall Russian alliance. They're the tip of the spear, as it were, of Russian forces. The capture has been confirmed by Prigozhin, the head of Wagner, and confirmed as well by President Vladimir Putin. And there are wider reports that Ukrainian troops are retreating en masse away from the city. Now, this is huge. This is massive. Bakhmut was probably the single most contested region or town in the whole of the Ukrainian conflict thus far. The conflict lasted 224 days, nine months. And during that time, Zelensky spent a massive amount of military resources to hold the city, including a lot of Ukrainian soldiers, uh, but alas, to no avail. Uh, Prigozhin has outlined how Wagner is now in a position to remain in the city and fortify defense lines, rebuild infrastructure, and establish a solid base for the arrival of the Russian army, which is expected to be redeployed to the area shortly. Now, 
Interestingly, Prigozhin noted as well that the fall of Bakhmut occurred exactly one year after the fall of Mariupol. So Russian forces clearly see a pattern here, and it's a pattern of victory. Though from a Western vantage point, it's a very slow, methodical, patient victory in contrast to the U.S. military's reliance on shock and awe tactics. Remember, Russians aren't particularly interested in shock and awe. They don't think it works. And of course, they point to Afghanistan as the model par excellence of that kind of failure, that strategy. They prefer the Clausewitzian model of a long, protracted grind that slowly but surely completely depletes and devastates and destroys the entire military structure of the enemy combatant. And that's exactly what we've been seeing the Russians doing in Ukraine with the fall of Bakhmut being the latest exemplar and that long protracted grind that is indeed annihilating the Ukrainian army. So what does this capture Bakhmut mean for the Ukrainian conflict going forward? Well, first, Bakhmut is an extremely strategic city, geographically speaking. So, very interesting. And what I'm wondering, you know, I've had a lot of people unsubscribe from my channel. They call me a pro-Russian enthusiast or uh, I'm a Putin supporter or whatever. Uh, anyway, I've just tried to paint reality as it is. And what's going to be entertaining is all the people that have commented on my channel saying, you know, oh, you're wrong, Bakhmut, uh, Ukraine's going to roll over the Russians. They're going to march all the way to Crimea. Well, I, let, let's let Steve Turley give you his summary on what's going to happen with the media now. The lies, the constant lies that you've been fed. I think the fall of Bakhmut proves beyond a shadow of a doubt that the legacy media, together with the military industrial complex, have been out and out lying to us this entire time about Ukraine. If this doesn't convince you, I, I don't think anything else will. Right. All we've been hearing, I mean, I even did a quick Google search today on Bakhmut. The legacy media refuses to acknowledge reality. They absolutely refuse to acknowledge the fact that the Ukrainians are getting crushed. They will. So that was Dr. Steve Turley. Uh, you know, I found sometimes I just like to throw in an interesting video because <laughs> uh, this is. This is just something to break things up, but this is Elon Musk's father. And uh, I found this clip on Russia Ukraine updates. Uh, you know, I get a lot of my material from that channel. And uh, I tell me he doesn't look like his son and actually talks just like him. I mean, the two, it's, it's almost eerie. It's like, you know, Elon's going to look exactly like his father someday and, and be exactly like him. Uh, and I, you know, I'd love to know the history behind his father and how he could raise such a brilliant man you know and 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 someone who's just god he, he, elon pours his soul into everything that he goes in but let's watch uh, elon's father check this out that's one minute this is just one minute brainwashed to be told that uh, ukraine is good and russia is bad and yet um they have found multiple bioweapon laboratories belonging to the united states in ukraine um, the Ukraine is led by a stand-up comedian who became president, which is extremely odd to me. Um, uh, I wish him good luck, but it's uh, extremely odd to me. Then I would say, if you look at Biden himself, um, he's obviously not running the United States. The United States must be, it appears to me, is being run by a bunch of misfits who are getting revenge for having been treated as misfits over the years. That's what it appears to me to be. It has been run by a bunch of misfits who are getting revenge for being treated as misfits over the years in the United States. So that was, that was Elon's father. And, uh, you know, one of the things I wanted to, to you know, now that, you know, we're, we're at the year anniversary of um, Mariupol uh, fallen, and uh, and there was a lot that the um, the Russians found out in Mariupol because, you know, one of the things that has baffled me uh, in this proxy war is why in the world were the Ukrainians so willing to die by the hundreds of thousands uh, in fighting for basically the United States and Europe uh, in this in this war? 
And I, well, we'd have to go back to 2014 uh, when the coup happened. And, uh, and I love how they, this is kind of a montage. I hope I didn't capture too much of the music because then I'll get a copyright on this. Uh, I hate it when they put the videos to music, but this just shows you some of the violence that took place in the coup. Let's take a look. Actively engaged in what's been happening in the Ukraine. So this is how it all started. I have to mute the music. But this is what it was like in 2014 when the coup, as the Russians would want you to... Believe? The brave Ukrainians took to the streets in order to stand peacefully against tyranny and to demand democracy. Well, it looks peaceful to me. <laughs> oh, yeah. Peaceful against tyranny. This is how it all began. Uh, not only has our embassy and our folks who are over there uh, folks uh, like Vice President Biden uh, have spoken directly uh, to President Yan uh, Yanukovych about our belief. Oh, oh, oh. I doubt they'll have it in this video, but there were snipers on top of the buildings that were shooting people. This is the peaceful uh, transition of power. Uh, there has to be a way to restructure the Ukrainian government in a way that allows the voices of the opposition uh, and those folks on the streets to be heard uh, in preparation for some sort of democratic process. Yeah, this looks democratic. All right, that's enough. I just wanted to show you what the beginning in 2014 of the birth. Zelensky wasn't in power. With greater legitimacy and unity. Uh, and that's going to be challenging, but we're trying to help on the negotiations on that. What do you think? Uh, I think we're in play. That's the CIA. Things are in play. So Another that would coup. Be great, I think, to help glue this thing and have the UN help glue it. And, you know, fuck the EU. Yeah, I like that. I wonder if the EU knows how screwed they are. Oh well, enough of that. So that's what happened in 2014. And let's bring this up to, to how, how in the world were all of these Ukrainians, uh, how, how did we get them to fight for the United States? And this was a video, once again, on uh, Russia-Ukraine updates. Uh, that talks about the re-education and the same thing that's going on in our schools with the uh, woke ideology that's uh, being brainwashed into our kids in the colleges right now. Uh, they're being taught Marxist, communist, socialist uh, education and they're not learning about the U.S. Constitution or capitalism or um, the Bill of Rights or you know any of that sort of thing. And that's what's changing the United States. It's going to be a huge battle. We've got some very, very difficult times ahead people i'm 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 working every day uh, i was out in my garden working today i i've shown you clips grow a garden grow a garden cut to just a brief clip of the garden thought this would be a cool effect to come out at night as you can see this is the latest on the garden taking out all this terrible soil and Getting rid of it, there's the sprinklers underneath there. There's the fiber. <laughs> I've got to be super careful as I work in here. There's the, the buckets that I've been using. And let's get the, there's the saw horses as I filter through. Unfortunately, the soil got into my mulch, so I'm working on that. And uh, check this out. These are all the bags of soil. These, these were on sale, the four underneath uh, at uh, Walmart. And I got the two uh, organics at uh, Home Depot, about nine bucks a bag there. And then, of course, this is the last of a half a yard of dirt that I've used in other places. Grow a garden, people. Grow a garden. Grow a garden. So that's just 
What, two seconds of me working in the garden there. Let's watch the clip about the re-education of Ukraine. So after the 2014 coup, this, uh, this was a good video that I found. I wanted you to watch this. Now all over Ukraine, even in the country's Russian-speaking regions, they began to prepare a new generation for a large-scale war against Moscow. 13-летний Глеб с прошлого лета в лагерь приезжает регулярно. Говорит, здесь можно не только физически развиваться, но и узнать много нового. Многого просто не знал насчет там истории. У нас каждый вечер лекции идут. Мы много чего узнаем. By 2022, streets in the Ukrainian capital would be named after Nazi collaborators. The ideology became mandatory study in kindergartens and schools across the country. Ala Gurtnikova has been teaching at Mariupol University for 30 years. We are now in one place where there was also a flight, I understand. Yes, and the fire was. The curriculum changed before her eyes. A new generation of Ukrainians was created, one capable of realizing what the CIA had come up with in the early 50s. The idea of cleansing Ukraine of undesirable nationalities. Сейчас смотрим введение в историю для пятого класса на украинском языке. Введение в историю. Тут очень интересно целый отрывок посвящен именно УПА и такое впечатление, что украинскую советскую социалистическую республику освобождала УПА. Я все-таки думала, что ее освобождала Красная Армия, в составе которой было Миллионы украинцев, которые героически пали за освобождение не только своей республики, но и за освобождение других республик, за освобождение той же Европы от коричневой чумы. Мы сейчас с вами находимся в одной из школ города Мариуполя. до сих пор находим в общественных библиотеках и в библиотеках учебных заведений нацистскую литературу. К примеру, вот, пожалуйста, история Великой Отечественной войны. Вот. Здесь тоже описываются солдаты СС, герои здесь описываются как бойцы АУН, УНА, УНСО, как герои и так далее. А Советский Союз, соответственно, как агрессор. К примеру, вот, пожалуйста, книга «Европейский Союз», коротко о главном. Европейский выбор Украины, коротко о главном, автор Леонид Кучма, почему Украина выбирает Европу, а не Россию. Национальные идеи украинцев, Украина и Россия. Вот, то есть здесь, пожалуйста, в общем, мы видим следы воспитания нового украинца, следы воспитания антироссии. As in the 50s, most material on Ukrainian nationalism was published with funding provided by American and Canadian sponsors. Настолько тщательно, тонко выписано, нигде ничего не говорится в лоб. Они говорят, ты представитель очень классного народа, одного из самых лучших в мире. И этот народ, вот за то, что он такой лучший, изначально все время был обижаем, угнетаем. В первую очередь, с колями, которые приходили и все отнимали. So that's it for this video. I just wanted to uh, say my piece. You know, I called the fall of Bakhmut about a month ago. That was when the inner uh, complex fell. That was truly the fall of the city, but uh, a lot of people said it's not over till it's over, until the fat lady sings and every Ukrainian is either dead or has left Bakhmut. Well, okay, as of today, <laughs> every Ukrainian is dead or has left Bakhmut. So, whatever you want to make of that. So, the war is going to get interesting now. I don't. I wanted to add one couple more things was... Uh, you know, NATO was massing forces uh, to, to reinforce Ukraine from Romania and uh, maybe bring them across Moldova. You probably haven't seen it in the news, but the Russians destroyed. There's a big bridge there. Um, they destroyed that bridge. So those reinforcements can't come in to aid Ukraine uh, if NATO forces wanted to come across. The Polish were beating the war drums for a while. I'm not sure if they're I mean, they've got a lot of mercenaries uh, fighting in Ukraine, and maybe the, with all of the body bags that are coming back to Poland now, 
they may be rethinking uh, their invasion of Western Ukraine. I don't know. We'll see what happens. Uh, especially, and of course, there were reports. Uh, I showed you the, in the last video the clips of that ammo dump uh, getting destroyed, and uh, Russia's put out a communique saying that there's a radiation cloud that's descending on Poland, and Poland says, nope, they're detecting no radiation. So, you know, it's awful hard to get your information of who to believe and what to believe. But uh, anyway, that's it for today's video. Uh, Bakhmut has fallen, and Peace out, stay free, just like Jeremiah Babe, you know, get, get in shape, grow a garden, and plan for the financial crisis, real estate crisis, every, the dollar, oh, that's another thing, uh, 18 nations in June are, uh, are they're going to have a big conference uh, of the BRICS, and so that's 18 more nations that are going to de-dollarize. So right now we've got more than half of the world that's uh, de-dollarizing, and so all of those dollars are coming back home. Uh, I don't imagine you know, if, you know, if China dumps its treasuries, which I think they will uh, once this new currency is in effect. The other bit of news is uh, China, I mean, not China, Canada is, is uh, putting their digital currency uh, in, in for the uh, Canadian people. And of course, the Canadians, they're just sheep. They, they go along with whatever their authoritarian uh, um, communist government uh, does to them. So uh, so now their government, with their digital currency, is going to be able to monitor everything they did. I mean, look at what they did to the truckers. They basically shut down their bank accounts and cut off all the crowdfunding that uh, people were trying to give to the truckers during that protest. Well, now they're going to be able to do that to every Canadian citizen. And, uh, and the Canadians will go along with it just like sheep. I hope the Americans aren't sheep. I'd like to think that we're not. Um, we'll see what happens. But things are going to get violent. And the cities especially in the cities. I'm glad I don't live in a city. Peace out, stay free, and it's good, good, good to live in the free, free, free Republican state of Florida under the great leadership of Governor DeSanctimonious.